Hi everybody, Mr. McNulty here. I hope you're well and welcome to my channel. Hopefully you know that during remote learning we've been doing a lot of digital music lessons. If you haven't seen any of them yet, check them out below. There's some really useful videos there to help you with things like GarageBand, Google Chrome Music Lab and some other things thrown in there too. But today we're going to do something to link with some other curricular areas or some other subjects. So we're going to link with literacy, drama, and bring in a bit of performance. So what we're gonna do is use GarageBand's voice recorder or audio recorder to change our voices up a little bit. We're gonna take inspiration from the series called The Masked Singer. You know that show where celebrities dress up in silly costumes, sing some songs, and then people have to guess who they are. But a big part of it is the celebrities do videos before they sing, giving little clues about themselves. However, their voices are all changed it would be much too easy to guess them if their voices just sounded like they normally did, right? So today we're going to have a go at teaching you how to change your voice so that you can take part in games like that. I'll also tell you about something that the teachers in my school are doing for the Masked Reader for World Book Day and hopefully this activity will give you a bit of experience in editing the sound, recording and also thinking about a purpose of recording thinking about a way to use your voice recording. So all you need to take part today is access to GarageBand. You can do that on Apple devices. So an iPhone, an iPad, or a MacBook. And that's it. We are gonna use the built-in microphone in your iPad. So if you've got everything you need and you're ready to get started, then let's go. Hi everybody, and welcome to this short and snappy video about using GarageBand to transform your voice just like on The Masked Singer. So the first thing you need to do is open your GarageBand app. And once you're in GarageBand, tap Create Song. The instrument you're going to use is in the Audio Recorder tab that looks like this in the center screen. If you don't have this on your screen straight away, just swipe using your finger until you get to Audio Recorder. So I'm going to work my way back. Now that I'm on audio recorder, I'm going to click where it says voice. So there's a little microphone symbol and underneath it, it says voice. So if I press that and you can see that now when I talk, there's a little green bar that moves up and down. Firstly, when we're recording sound, we don't want that to go out of the green and turn yellow or red. And in sound production, we call that clipping because that can affect the quality of the recording. And if I move closer to the microphone on my iPad, so I'm going to do that now. If I move closer, the level gets higher. If I move further away, the level gets lower. So what you want to do is have a nice steady level of volume of your recording. So you can see that in the center of the screen, it says studio and fun. If you were recording your voice for a podcast or maybe you're doing a voiceover for a film you're working on in school, then this would be a great way to do that. You can change the setting by pressing on the microphone that says lead vocals and choosing a different one. You can see that they all have different names. But today we're going to focus on the fun settings. So I'm going to press fun. And it says tap the red button to start recording because that will record using the microphone on my iPad that I'm working on. So I'm going to press OK. And you can see that I have lots of different settings. We're going to explore them and have some fun with them in a little moment. But let's come up with a clip that we can record to have some fun with. If you were doing this with your class and you were having a masked singer type competition where you had to match the voices to the pupils, then you could all say the same phrase and edit it in different ways so it would be quite tricky to tell who it was. So let's go for how, what, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? A bit of a tongue twister, right? So firstly, I'm going to press the red recording button and record myself saying that. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? How much wood would back. a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Fantastic. So now I can put that back to the start and I'm going to press on a different setting. 
So let's go for the squirrel, or chipmunk, sorry. My animal terminology was not correct there. But now if I play it, you should hear that my voice I'm comes a with a winter, jack of a winter, kick, jack, wood. So already it sounds like the mass Singer when you can't really tell who it is. And if I change the pitch... You can see I'm it Can you see that on my output? So in, where my voice is coming in, but out, I have a little red dot at the top. That means for that pitch, it's clipping. So I need to put that level down a little bit. So let's try again. So let's try a different setting, if you don't like that one. Let's try the monster. Fantastic. Or you could even have a robot. You can have so much fun with this, guys. It's really, really endless possibilities. Let's go to the alien voice. And you can hear that each one has its own different sound, but it covers up my voice and it makes it sound like something that it's not. So again, this is a really good skill for making films. Um, if you're making a character that is voiced by a human actor, but you want it to sound more like an alien or a robot, all you have to do is use this post-production tool to edit that voice. So let's listen to the robot again. And if you're not impressed with that enough, you can change the parameters, you can change the width and the pitch. And again, it makes it harder and harder to tell who is is speaking. So we'll try one more. Let's try the bubbly, dreamy one. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? That's a little bit easy to guess, isn't it? Or the megaphone? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? So once you've found a voice clip that you're happy with, let's How much back wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Then you can apply some of the tools that we've learned in the previous videos in my channel. So if you click on the third icon from the top left corner, that looks like horizontal lines. Then you click on FX. You can change some of the other things again by adding filters. So you could add an orbit or a delay. And you can have a little play around with that. So let's let's hear what that can do. So the level of detail of editing and hiding the voices is entirely up to you. So now what I'm going to talk to you about is how we can use this in the classroom. So something that my school is doing for World Book Day, which is this week, Thursday, I believe, for World Book Day, each of the teachers is recording a 10 or 20 second clip of them reading a book. And then we're going to edit our voices so that it's hard to tell who it is. And all of our voices are going to be put into a, the masked reader quiz for the pupils to guess the teachers for each voice. You could do something like that with your class. However, you could have a go at guessing each other's, or you could see how many different ways you can disguise your voice. Can you disguise your voice using these tools so well that someone at home wouldn't even be able to guess who it was? Hopefully this has given you some fun ways to use the voice recording tools and GarageBand. In this series of lessons later, we'll have a look at learning about something called Foley, and we'll have a go at really editing sounds as well as voices to sound like things that they're not. But until then, remember you can find lots of videos down below in my channel. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please remember to like and subscribe, and thanks again for watching this video with me. Let me know how you get on with it. Let me know if you found it fun. Until then, I'll see you soon. Bye.